I think Singapore has got to an interesting stage where it's always been a, a kind of cautious adopter of ideas from elsewhere, uh, but it's been su through such a period of, of growth and success, really, that it's ended up running out of um, things to emulate and has, has reached the position of a, a having started to uh, pioneer. pioneer and do really innovative things. No, I think that's right. And uh, uh, you, you're starting also to see it with the green landscapes. Uh, and that's, I mean, I, I've been through, I don't know, how many conversations in the last four days with various people from various agencies at various levels of various agencies, et cetera, et cetera. And everybody's looking to compare Singapore with somewhere else, right? Even New York, which is wacky to me. Um, and I'm sitting there thinking, why? Because in many ways... Uh, it seems to me you're on the cusp of a lot of innovation here and you should be uh, sort of turning inwards. You know, Isaiah Berlin, the famous philosopher, said there are periods of dancing and periods of marching. And, you know, you, you've, uh, uh, you're into a period of marching. As far as I'm concerned, you've done enough dancing. I thought it was the other way around. The dancing sounded more fun. There's <laughs> nothing to do with fun dance. You dance with people, others, you see. <laughs> Richard. <laughs> marching sounded a bit... R restrictive. Then you move forward. Yes, I see. There are, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's one thing I was curious about: the 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 density of Manhattan at ground level, um, which is. Uh, you know, fantastic. It's basically continuous, uh, almost continuous public interaction as you go along the street. There's very few areas uh, with a with a blank uh, ground level, um, and then the density within, for instance, public housing areas is actually not that less than the um, no. than the residential density of New no. York. No, in fact, if you take uh, you know the uh, uh, the uh, Stuyvesant. Oh, early image, for those of you who know New York, the Stuyvesant houses, they, they were actually built as part of a kind of an affordable thing. They become uh, very much coveted because of the location and they've been pretty well maintained. I mean, they're not the greatest from an architectural point of view, but in terms of spatial accommodation, location, uh, they're surrounded there and, and there's been a lot of uh, building um, retrofitting of stores in and around it, so it's on top of commercial. Uh, that's right. Um, actually, public housing in New York is probably one of the few places where it's a success story overall. Mm. In many other parts of the country, Chicago, horrible, horrible story. But New York, I mean, there are some exceptions up in the Bronx, but then, you know, I'll show you uh, Via Verde, which is making a, a sort of statement on that behalf. It's, it's been pretty successful. And I think one of the th keys is that it, it isn't built at a sort of different density. It's different looking, unfortunately, in some ways, although people have gotten over that. Mm. Well, where I was heading to with the question was, if, if we're at that similar density, do you think uh, like more areas in Singapore could support this kind of really uh, interactive commercial ground level? Oh, yeah, gosh. I mean, I had to say this, but to me, Singapore is not urban. It's basically an issue of big roads. It's a, it's a modernist thing. And it, it, it's like sort of ville, ville radieurs curvy, <laughs> if, you, if you understand what I mean. Um, big roads, very wide. Um, I was out, out last night having dinner at the Fulton Hotel, very posh, very swanky. To get there, the bloody roads like from here to the, past the back of the room out into the lobby. Uh, you can land a plane there. <laughs> I mean, that's where you're going, good. Anyway, you've got a lot of a lot of wide roads, which is actually not the way Manhattan or, or gridded cities like Barcelona are, are about. Um, and I think it's about clusters of building in green. It's not really urban in the sense of uh, New York or Barcelona or Paris. Uh, and I'm not saying it should be. Don't, don't get me wrong. I'm just saying it isn't. Mm. Um, uh, and it may not need to become that exactly. Uh, to me, Singapore is, uh, ha has a sort of uh, city 
landscape, shall we call it that, without saying whether it's urban or not, that's unique in a way. Mm. And it's probably best of, best of breed. Um, I do think, however, that there's a lot of room for intensification of that at the ground level. And certainly if we look uh, to comparisons and its real density overall, you put a lot more towers in them. I mean, if you got rid of a few of the airports, in other words, the military calmed down for a while, right? And <laughs> the, you know, f few less airports, you could go <laughs> up. Because out near Changi, you know, that's where SUTD, where I do stuff, right? It's flat as a pancake. Mm. And it's a, you think, well, is this going to last? Uh. It's a waste of land. We've seen that Dreamliner taking off almost vertically, right? Yeah. Maybe, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, if, I saw. If, <laughs> if they come in, uh, the height limits can be changed around airports as technology changes. Yeah, we have vertical takeoff, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.